Broadcasting from the Golden Spread of Texas, this is The Fred Hughes Show. With each episode, we introduce to you an inspiring person or message to help you grow and unlock your potential in life. I'm Fred Hughes, professional photographer, pastor, teacher, author, and your show host. Thank you for joining us and welcome to this episode brought to you by the Faithful Partners of Decision Ministry. Hello and welcome to another Fred Hughes show. We're glad that you were able to join us tonight and uh, we're just excited about bringing the Word of God and kind of sharing good news with, with everybody that chimes in. Please remember to uh, do those little, ring those little bells and uh, subscribe to our channel. That puts you in a place to where you get, uh, you know, you have a reminder every once in a while of, of when the program's coming on. This kind of helps our attendance a little bit. And then also those little, the little bells and uh, thumbs up and those different kinds of things that you do, they make a big difference in how many um, viewers we're able to reach. And so do do those things. They seem so simple and kind of ineffective in my mind, but they're not. They actually do good work. So help us with that, if you would, please. We have, we appreciate that. Uh, today I have uh, with me uh, Mr. Howard Dwayne Builderback, and we he's been on our show and and uh, regular regular dude around here. And uh, so we're excited. We're going to have a good. Uh, time together today. Dwayne, welcome. Man, to friend. The show. Thanks for having me back. Man, it's always a good time. <laughs> well, we have fun and uh, just talk about things of God and get try to get something actually worth worth listening to produced here. <laughs> <laughs> well, word of God's always good, you know, it anytime it goes forth. So it's good to be able to share that. And like I say, I appreciate our friendship. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know, God is good and we uh, we have to, you know, we have to lean into that, especially in the days that we're living in right now, Dwayne. It, it's getting it's getting a little bumpy out there. Oh, it is dark and everywhere you go, I mean, it, it's something always trying to tear us down. Yes, sir. And if it can, it'll it'll just overtake. Yeah. Depression's at an all-time high. Absolutely. And people are just well, up. you know, the word says uh, that, you know, to build each other up and in, 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 as, as you see the day approaching. And, you know, I mean, we can we can kind of see uh, dark days approaching. And so it's it's time for us to build each other up, encourage one another in the Lord. And uh, so that's kind of what we want to do. And we want to talk about uh, some good things today. So tell, tell me what it is that you've been kind of working on here. So the last couple of months even, God's really just been downloaded. You know, people that I've been in contact with, especially yeah. in our Saturday group, it, it's been like, man, why am I struggling? Why can I get, get over these weaknesses, these areas yeah. of my life? And yeah. and I told, I, God really brought it back. He said, it's a, it's a soul problem. And mm-hmm. so it was one of those things where, you know, they talk about, well, I keep gravitating back to old patterns and stuff oh Uh, man yeah i mean he's just comfortable in those clothes (laughs) (laughs) he's so easy to come up out of the grave i tell you man we got to keep him in check but that's the thing is is god said you know teach this this group he said really just pour into them the the thought is on soul renovation renovating our soul you know we're triune beings and so body soul and spirit and John, the apostle said, and first John, he said, beloved, I desire that you prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. Yeah. And that's where it sprung. Yeah. And it was like, he said, okay, I want you to prosper in all manner of life. Jesus can give us abundant life. Yeah. But it, he said, it's, it's contingent on your soul prosperity. How is your soul prospering? How are you being transformed? The whole thing that Jesus didn't just come for salvation. He came for renovation to restore what was lost in the garden so that we could now be his representative, his light to the world. And so, man, that's the the big thing that 
our group has really been sunk into and we're beginning to see people it just transforming. They're That's like going, true. okay, now their minds are becoming renewed. <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, you know, I mean, that we, the one thing I, I, I would, uh, you know, point at would be that, you know, we, we renew, we renew our minds with, by reading the word Amen. and uh, getting into it. And, and we re- try to restore, you know, but it's not really a matter of restoration. It's a matter of dying completely to, you know, those old things, dying to that old man. Paul says, not I that live, but it's Christ who lives in me. And so we want to make that perfectly clear that when we're talking about, you know, the soul, you still have a soul um, after you're born again. And after you have, you know, laid that part of it down, uh, was it, I um, can't remember the scripture. It's, anyway, it, it talks about uh, dying to dying to those things. And, that, and that's what we want to do is we want to completely put that old nature in a grave. Yes. Give it a good burial <laughs> and say good Stamp it in. to you, you know. But it's still, we still have the function in, you know, our, the real realm of the world here so long as we still have these earth suits. Yes. And so that's what we're talking about is we're talking about not trying to raise that old dead man up Ooh. and patch him up <laughs> and, and put new, new, new bow in his hair because you can't do that. Oh. Um, Christ alone is the salvation. Christ alone can, can make that change. And the minute you got born again, you got a brand new spirit. Oh, amen. You're born again. <laughs> you're just like Jesus. You're going to, you know, you are perfected. So one third of this project is completely done. And we still got two thirds. We're still working. On. Hallelujah. Yes. <laughs> we've got the soul and we've got the, we've got this body that we still live in. And we're not going to get that completely straightened out until we, until we, you know, step into a new, a new suit and a new home and, and a new destination that we reach. So keep that in mind. But, but there's a lot of things that we can do to make this better to make this present life stronger and that's what really we want to emphasize today yeah it's co-laboring with god absolutely we're is building we're is filled allowing the holy spirit to work inside of us to conform us into the image of christ absolutely paul said put on the lord jesus christ and so one of the thoughts the the I guess was really burning when we talked about this and you asked me and I apologize for taking so long to get back with you, but it's so light in us. And so God gave me a title a couple of weeks ago and he, he said, it's a mega atomic source in a micro package. Wow. Christ in us, the hope of glory, man, it's amazing. Psalms eight says, God, what? Is it that you're so mindful of man that you have crowned him with glory and honor, made him a little bit lower? And in the original uh, Hebrew, it says lower than Elohim. The translators couldn't even comprehend that whenever. So they said lower than the angels. But we know that we're higher in angels. So it was lower than God himself. So in submission to God, we're underneath him. But he crowned us in the garden with perfection, with glory and honor to be representatives. Mm -hmm. Now, the one thing that I saw in the weakness of man that once he sinned in the garden. So get this. God gave me a couple of acronyms that revolutionized it in our group. First one was the word sin. He put it in an acronym and he said Self-induced neuroticism. <laughs> and I was like, okay, it's been 30 years since Bible college, right? And I'm like, uh, I remember our psychology class and I was like, I had to go look up the word. And so when I went and looked up neuroticism and you break it down, it was amazing that it was talking about the weaknesses, the, the flesh desires that we have, that we lean towards. And where Paul says, you know, the good that I desire to do, I do it not. But the evil that I hate, I find myself doing, oh, woe is me, this wretched man. Who's going to deliver me? Oh, thanks be unto the Lord Jesus Christ. 
And so through Christ, through salvation, we've been given help and, and ability to overcome those things. And so in doing so, he said, okay, go to Galatians uh, 5, what is it, 19 through 21, and it talked about the, the, the sins of the flesh, and it paralleled neuroticism. I was like, whoa, okay, that's cool, okay. Yeah, sure. So now I know that, you know, sin came. So what happened in the garden was that the tempter came, yeah, there was the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, but man chose intellectualism yes. over trust or faith in the Heavenly Father and His goodness, and out of that, when the Spirit died, then the soul, and this is the second acronym that he gave me, he said soul. And I was like, okay, well, what are you talking about? He said, the source of universal living. Imperfection, the source of universal living was the spirit in us, the pneuma breath that he breathed into us. And so we were operating out of his likeness. But when sin corrupted, then it gravitated to intellectualism. So now we thought that the things that we desire were going to fulfill our purpose and give us pleasure. And so now in our fallen nature, we were housed by these carnal desires. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so all through the years until Christ came, we were held under that. And then the law just showed us what was evil. And then Christ came and fulfilled it. But then he said, I am sending you the Holy Spirit to teach you, to guide you, to empower you so that you might live and this productive, abundant life that I've come to give you. Yeah. And it's amazing that the religious people, and, and that's kind of where this megatomic source sprung up, was you have Paul and Barnabas, they're in Antioch, and they're talking to the Jews, and you have some Gentiles that are listening, and more, they're they're soaking it up. But the the, the Jews, they, you know just like any religious spirit, antagonize it, reject it. And so it's amazing in Acts 13 and 47 is that Paul says, hey, well, now we're going to have to leave giving this to you. We're going to go to the Gentiles. But he said in 47, let me get to there. He says, after telling the, the Jews that they've been rejected, he says, For the Lord has commanded us, I have set you as a light to the Gentiles that you should be for the salvation to the ends of the earth. Now, he said to be as light. We're to be light bearers. We're to carry lights. But I was like, well, how does that fit in? And he says, well, because the light that's in you is the source that's going to overtake and build this transformative power in your fallen soul. It's exchanging or allowing the Holy Spirit to come in and change our source of universal living. Whereas we're prone to living by the source of the flesh and the natural things, now the Holy Spirit takes the things of God and the, and the Word of God, which we should love this, we should, we should eat the Word daily. Yes. Be into it, for in the principles, the laws, the statutes, and the judgment of God are not to restrict us, but to free us. Mm -hmm. So it brings that word into us. Now the Holy Spirit's going to activate that in our relationships, in our external ways of living, in our desires. We're going to know what is good or evil, yeah. and we're going to have the power to say no. So many of the people that, that are in our group, they're like, man, I keep tripping up over this drug habit, over this alcohol, over this sex. And so it's like, or over my anger, over my depression. And it's like, okay, how do I get over that? I said, okay, triune being, body, soul, and spirit. Inside of our spirit, we are perfect. And there is all the power of God available and ready to be activated. But there's a doorkeeper between the soul and the spirit and God said, call him Mr. Will. 
I was like, okay, that, that's a cool play on terms. So yeah. it was like, okay, well, Mr. Will stands there, and he's the one that opens the door to the Spirit. In Romans, I believe it's Romans chapter 6, Paul says, unto whom that you give yourself or surrender yourself to, they are your master, whether the flesh or the Spirit. Right. And so he said, basically, you can open the door or shut the door. It's up to you. He said, but... Just like in, in Revelation 3 and 20, a lot of times we use these to lead people to the Lord. And I'm not saying it's bad, but in a better context, it's the spirit is just knocking at the door of our soul saying, hey, if you'll allow me, I'll empower you that you can overcome this weakness that you're facing. Yes. If we're dealing with mental issues, if we're dealing with physical attributes where we're gravitating back to the flesh, he says, hey, I'm there. He's urging us to open the door and says, hey, look, I'm going to give you wisdom. I'm going to give you knowledge. I'm going to give you strength to, to follow my command. Now, Paul uses a word. He says, under the one that you surrender yourself to, you become the slave of that one. Well, we need to be slave to the flesh or slave to the spirit. Yes. Slave to the flesh brings chains and bondage submission and slavery unto the spirit brings life and freedom. So whenever we think, well, I'm going to let nobody control me. Well, the thing about it is we're letting somebody control us. Mm -hmm. We're letting our fallen nature control our response rather than allowing the Holy spirit and his perfection to give us wisdom to respond in the attributes of God and see victory. Yes. So, when he said that, then I was like, okay, we're, I said, you designed us for this light, for this glory, for this purpose of freedom. He took me to the dawning of light in Matthew 4, 12 through 17, and it basically boils down, I'll kind of paraphrase it. He said that the people that sat in darkness, a great light has dawned on them. So all of a sudden, then Christ came and he began to reveal the kingdom of God to him that you can walk in power, you can walk in love, you can walk in freedom. And so now the light began to shine. So we see the dawning of light that came and we know that the origin of light, I want to I want to go to this because it was like John uh, 1, 14. Sorry about that. <laughs> and John... Uh, one fourteen. Let me turn there. And John, one, four, one, two, four. So you're talking about the word. It's so vital that we are in the word. So in the first, it says, "In the beginning was the word." Right? The word was with God, and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. That's one through five. And so it sprung up right there. And it says, in him was the life, and the life was the light of men. Amazing. Yeah, one, four, one, one through four. One through four. Yes, sir. Sorry. And, and so it's amazing that in him is light and the life and the life of all men was the light. The light is talking about the radiant source of the Holy Spirit, which is another symbol for the Holy Spirit, the light of God. And so... In verse 5, it's amazing that it says, and the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. So I went back to the Greek and the Aramaic, and so whenever I looked at it, it said more fully, it says, and the darkness couldn't overtake it. <laughs> the darkness can't overtake it in our soul yeah. whenever we open up and when the Holy Spirit's saying, hey, I'm knocking at the door. If you'll let me in, I'll come in and we'll dine, we'll sup together, Jesus said, and we'll have fellowship in that. And what that means is he's bringing his strength into our weakness. Oh, wretched man, Paul said, am I who will who will deliver me from this bondage? 
Well, we're not opening the door. To die to self means that we've got, we've got to allow a greater source that's available and in us to live in us, to operate in our nature, our mind, our will and emotion. And so when he said that, and the light shines in the darkness and the darkness could not overtake it. And then, you know, talking about down a little bit further in 12 or uh, 10 and 11, where John was talking about, he's not the light. But in verse 12, it says, now, as many as received him to them, he gave the right to become children of God to those who believe in his name, who were not born of blood, nor the will of flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. And so we see now. When we accept, we talk about the new birth a lot of times. We are new creation in Christ. Yes. But we don't we don't understand that. We've always been spiritual beings having a earthly encounter. That's right. But the problem is, is we've lived so long as earthly beings trying to find a way to get back to God and trying to please God that sometimes we're trying to do that in self-effort. And so we're not looking at the root of the problem. We need to be living in this new identity that God has given us as sons and daughters. Yeah. And, you know, uh, one of the things is is that we, we, we don't know how to be dead to sin. We don't know how to be dead. We don't know how to be dead to that, that old nature. Although we are, if we're born, if you're born again, you're dead to it. Yes. You do, but you're comfortable with it. We lived in it so long that it feels more right than the spiritual clothing that God has for us. And so, a lot of times we 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 we, we just don't know what we have. It's just the biggest problem that we have with that. And we're trying to go back and actually operate in that old nature and get different results. <laughs> Come on. And that doesn't work. So if we die to those to that nature and start clothing ourselves, I love the part where he said, "Be clothed." You know, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. It's just like take that old coat off and, and and you know send it out to the dump or whatever, and 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 suit up in this new attitude, this new ability, this new spiritual life that we have and operate on. You know, let that let that light dawn. Yeah. Wake up. Wake up. Start shining. Yeah, come on. You know, and, and you start <laughs> operating in this new life that we have in Christ Jesus. And that's that's where you get the power of and, and the flow and you get success over some of these same old things that just keep coming in and beating us down, defeating us. Yes. And, ta- and, 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 and the enemy is really good at reminding you of your past. Oh, come on. He'll tell you all your failures. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that that points to the next part is is come to the light. You know, Jesus said that people in John three nineteen through twenty one, he was talking about the simple fact that people love the darkness. Yeah. They want to stay in the darkness. They won't come to the light. Well, that's what sometimes we're. We're so programmed by religion of the past that says, yes. oh, you know, we can't come to God. You know, he just wants to beat us down. No, he wants to liberate us. He wants to free us. Right. And so once we come to that understanding that in the light is all the goodness of God, then we we enjoy running to it. Uh, I have one of my, my younger children that <laughs> I ask him to take out the trash a lot of times at night. And it's amazing. He's almost 18 and he, he's like, it's dark out there. I said, it's all right. Take a flashlight. It's only about 20 feet to the trash dumpster. And it's, I tell him, so why are you afraid of the dark? I'm not afraid of the dark. I'm afraid of what's in the dark. <laughs> well, run to the light. Run to the light. Take the light with you for the light shines and the darkness cannot overtake it. So if we live in the light we don't have to fear the darkness Amen. so whenever we look at it then i saw that jesus in in um john 9 5 said as long as i'm in the world i'm the light of the world right and so 
while he was in the world, he was shining as the representation of what was going to be accessible to us. And so as he said, as long as I'm here in this world, I am the light. And so then there became an impartation. Jesus changed from not only am I the light, he said, but then one of my favorite scriptures is Matthew 5, 14 through 16. Um, matter of fact, it was one of those things that we used a lot whenever we were telling people, hey, we need to be a, a light bearer for God because of the simple fact that he came. But Jesus speaking to his disciples in, in verse 14, he said, you are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but put it on a lampstand and give it light to all who are in the house. Then he said, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father who is in heaven. Right there, God gave me application of why we don't see victory. Sometimes we hide the light from the world. We don't want to be uh, looked at as some religious nut or, or, well, there's that Christian. You know, every time they come around, they're quoting scripture. Well, I'd rather do that and walk in freedom and push back the darkness rather than, than uh, you know, just kind of contend or, or compromise with it and let it just sink in around me till it shades me out. But he said it this way, I've come that I might shine light in you so that your soul may be enlightened and transformed so that we can come into the place where now people are being drawn to him. But the application of why sometimes we don't walk in victory is we're trying to live a dual life. Yes. We want to live as as citizens of this world. Now, I thank God for America, and I thank God for letting me be a citizen of this country, but I'm of a higher country. That's right. I am a citizen of heaven, and I'm a sojourner here in America. Yes. So if I live as a citizen of the kingdom of heaven, I ought to represent it everywhere I go. That's right. And the problem is, is we put a basket over our light. And we wonder why that we're overtaken by the, the attitudes of those around us. Yes. You know, Paul says, he calls it being too soul. Come on. Too soul. That, you know what? In psychology, I learned Ooh. that's schizophrenia. Yeah, there you go. Or or now they call it something different. Uh, uh, bipolar. bipolar. <laughs> and, and, and really, you know, We've dealt with that in deliverance, you know, I know you have. And it's one of those things, that, you know, it's a spirit that overtakes because it's two mindsets. And yeah, it's having two, 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 trying to think of two things at one time. You can't do that. It's, uh, I mean, it's not, it's going to be counterproductive. And so if, if you're in that mode, if you're trying to live as a Christian and operate in the old soul, yeah. Well, then you're, you're going to be confused and you're going to make a lot of mistakes and you're going to be just devastated by it because it's just, it's, it's unhealthy. It's not right. If you're going to be a sinner, go be a good sinner. But Sell if you're out. going to be a Christian, let's go, go be a good Christian and live a, live a life of Christ and that he's given to us. So, you know, let that old man die and you pick up and re-suit up with the life of Christ. And, and, and that's one of the things that we've, we've, talk to individuals about a lot. We, we deal with and we say, well, Armor Center Ministries that we oversee, it, it literally is an acronym as well. I'm an acronym nut. And it literally means a radical move of righteousness. And people ask me over the years, oh, well, you think you're righteous. Yes, yes I am. Amen. In Christ <laughs> Jesus, I am righteous. Absolutely. I ask that all the time of people at churches. I say, okay, today I want to call. How many righteous do we have here? <laughs> Man, you had the, the look and the audacity, even some preachers, you know, they're like, oh, I can't believe you. So but it's like. That's the truth. People, people don't know that they're righteous. 
if we if we don't have that solidified in us, we can't ever access the light because that's our identity. Well, they're looking at their righteousness. They're not looking <laughs> at, at Christ as God's righteousness, which He put inside of us. He took our righteousness out. Oh man! And put His righteousness in. It's Him that makes us oh, righteous. Oh come on! Not our performance yes and that's where the world that's where that's why you get those weird looks yeah because they're going well me blah, 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 blah. Uh, and it's amazing that <laughs> so many times uh, you know that when you say that then people, oh no oh, oh, don't look at me no uh, <laughs> I, I, i'm not christ i'm not good i'm like then you're not dead yeah, right. uh, i don't mean that in a demeaning, ugly way. But exactly. the thing about it is I'm not my own. Yes. Galatians, you refer to Galatians 2.20, which is my life verse. It's one of those things that whenever I come to Christ, uh, my disciple master said, pick out a life first and took me six months and God gave me Galatians 2.20. I'm crucified with Christ. Yes. Nevertheless, I live. Yet it's not I that lives, but Christ that lives in me. And the life that I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself up for me. Yes. Amen. When we understand, I've been bought, I've been purchased into a life of freedom from a life of degradation and sin. And now I choose, I choose to surrender. I'm like, my old manner of living got me nowhere. It, it, was, it was a cesspool. But Whenever he bought me to freedom, I don't want to go back. So I I, I willfully, and and there's a word that used to be, um, when Paul talked about being a slave of Christ, he used doulos, where it was, there's a couple interpretations. One, it it was a slave. But one day I was reading Warren Whitman. Thank you. Never can get his last name out. Yeah, yeah. And so he he wrote, he says, that word actually interpreted means a love slave. Now, it's not a perverted thing, okay? What it means, I become so in love into the freedom that he have that I would surrender everything to him because yeah. he gives me everything in return. Yeah. And it's like, why would I not want to? But so then, That's the good news. <laughs> man, it's freeing. <laughs> I don't have to, I still mess up. Yeah. I still find darkness in my soul and I still have to open doors for that light to come in. Yes. And so whenever we, we come to that and when we look for that, we've got, we've got to remove the basket off of our mind yes. and allow him to come in. Well, you don't understand my emotions get running away. Yeah, mine too. Uh, man, yeah, that, that's exactly what you know. Repentance, Come the on. word repentance, it means change your thinking. Yeah, it doesn't, you know, it, it turn it around. And, and a lot of people, you know, growing up as a good old Baptist, well, I, I was going like, oh, I, you know, I, I need to be born again, and that turns things around. Yeah, but you no, know, it, it, it actually literally means to change your thinking. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to think of the proverb where it says, you know, ponder the path of the ways of your or the paths of your feet, ponder yeah. the paths of right. your feet. And so basically it, what happens is for me, whenever I first, I mean, growing up in church, I thought it was about wearing a suit, the Sunday school and church and, you know, doing good deeds, not that doing good deeds or not a representation of the light. Let them see your good works. Okay. But so much of the time we want to clean the outside and never worry about the inside. And so we put on the religious frame of things, but we never get to the meat of the transforming of our soul. And it was one of those things that even through ministry, we talked a little bit about uh, before this, you know, there's a lot of things that we learned that sometimes I've had to unlearn some religious ways that I was doing things that even though they're scriptural, they're not applicable. And so they're out of of context. Yeah. Out of context. They don't apply in the form. 
Because people want to try to twist that and bring us back into legalism, into bondage, into the ways that they think we ought to operate. Whereas he, the Holy Spirit, wants to lead us and guide us into all truth so that he can make it operational in us. One of the things that was so amazing, the light of God shines on grace. And years ago, I had a professor, he taught grace, and he taught it in a whole new way. It was more than just uh, God's riches at Christ's expense or, you know, the unmerited favor, which we don't earn it. It's by faith that we believe in Christ. We don't earn our salvation. It is fully given to us in God's love. However, he spun it up. He said this thing. He said, grace is God's operational power in us, to us, and over us. And he said, when we begin to understand that that is our inheritance in him, then we can walk in the freedom. I don't choose. I I don't desire to sin. So I'm always trying to open the channels for the spirit of God to lead me into it. But when I sin, then I can, I don't have to run from him. I run to him. I don't run to the darkness to hide like Adam and Eve and cover myself in fig leaves. I, I run to God Because I find whenever I come to the light, then the darkness begins to run from him. If I approach him, he forgives me. If I confess my sins to him, he's faithful and just forgive me, cleanse me from all that unrighteousness of my wrongdoing. And so it's not that I'm not righteous. He just removes that blemish out of me. And therefore... I don't have to deal with the condemnation that the enemy is throwing at me. Right. You know, if you look at Adam and Eve, how they responded to God, mm. okay, uh, <laughs> they they ran and hid from Him. Uh, they they didn't they didn't run to Him. Right. They didn't run to the light. They ran away and hid from Him. And then what else did they do? They picked fig leaves, and like you said. Put, tried to, to cover their sinfulness up. And, you know, when you pull a leaf off of a tree, mm, come on. it dies. Yeah. So it literally was the dead covering the Ooh. dead. <laughs> Man, that, that, that is good. That's good. I like that. So our remedy is to bring more death, death. <laughs> and to cover up our death. And, and, that absolutely makes no sense. Yeah. But we, we lean on it all. I mean, that's logical thinking. To an unregenerated mind. Uh, amen. But it's not right thinking for one that is regenerated. Yeah. And, 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 it, and so we need the truth to set us free. And that's where that's why we always point. That's why we always focus you at, to the word of God, because that is the truth you know, the truth you really get intimate with and, and possess. That's the truth that will set you free. It's not just hearing Somebody read scripture. No, uh, and that's so good because I've heard people say, well, you know, I listen to podcasts. Well, the scripture says that in the last day, my people will perish for a lack of hearing, yeah. hearing the word of God. Hmm. Well, we live in such a day and age where we can pick it up and hear it in any increment. But the problem is we're not hearing becoming intimate with it. Yeah, right. We're hearing it. We're letting it play out and it reverberates in our mind and it sinks a little over our soul. And so we get a little residual, yeah. but when we dive into it and we digest it and we ponder it, then it becomes meat unto us that builds strength. And we begin to use that in overtaking. Yeah. And so it's learning and it's been a lifelong journey. I'm sure it'll be a continuum until the day I die. Cause Paul said, I'm not yet apprehended that which I have been apprehended unto. And so we have to constantly be filling up because we got, we got, we got holes in these earth suits and things fall out. 
But I want to go one other scripture, and we talked a little bit about this, about the lamp, but it's actually in Luke. It's Luke 8, 16 is where it picks up, and Jesus speaking still about the revealed light. It's kind of the same context as Matthew 5, but he says, No one, when he has lit a lamp, covers it with a vessel or puts it under a bed, but sets it on a lampstand that those who enter may see the light, for nothing is secret. That will not be revealed or anything hidden that will not be known and come to the light. Now, in verse 18, he, he changed it just a little bit from just hearing or seeing the light bringing sight. He said in 18, therefore, take heed how you hear. For whoever has to him more will be given. Whoever does not have even what he seems to have will be taken from him. And it was amazing. He, he said, there's a, there's a way to increase this light presence inside of you. Yeah. One, you just, you just hit on it. And that's why I wanted to go there was because when we hear the word, when we hear the word, then he, there's more than just hearing, but being mm-hmm. careful how we hear. In other words, making it applicable in our life, responding to it, because he's going to guide us. He's going to, I often ask people, and I challenge myself mainly with this. I say, how many times do we sin willingly as a Christian? Personally, I've been ruined to sin. When Christ came in, the light shined inside of me, and the helper that's inside of me now alerts me yes. before I take action into sin. Yes. And I don't want to grieve him, but sometimes I'm a little stubborn, and I want my way and my flesh overrules. Mm-hmm. And so the thing about it was, was okay, Do I want what has been taken me from me? So in some of the areas of my soul where I've let light in, if I'm not careful, I choose to react to my flesh and I find it overtaking me, right? Yeah. Okay. So go ahead. It it can definitely overtake you. And, and, you know, it's like, it's like I'm in the marriage process, uh, you know, it, it, we're, st- we're still accountable to that person that we live with. Yeah. And a lot of time we don't want to, you know, our, our want to has been changed. Yeah, come on. It's not all about just self. Now we've got this other person in our life and we want to be wholly uh, revealed. We want to be clear. We want to do this. But every once in a while, we just have these little stupid moments, you know, <laughs> yeah. every once in a while, like with God, <laughs> We have to, you know, apologize. We have, we screw up. I mean, we mess it up bad, you know, sometimes. And we have to go to that person and ask forgiveness. Come on. And if we want to restore that relationship and have a good, strong relationship going forward, then we've got to do those things. We, it, there's a maintenance in, involved. Maintenance. Here. I love it. And, uh, and so that's, and, and that's kind of a good, I think that's why God gave us the picture of marriage and, and you know, how we have, we're taking in new responsibilities into our life. It, it, we got to die to self. Yeah, yeah. It's like if you're a young man, you got to die to self, and you got to give yourself over to this family you've created. Come on. All right. Yeah, it's amazing. Uh, you hit on something that weirded me out years ago. Okay, so one morning I was praying, and I was on. And believe me, I'm not weird. I don't wear dresses. But what happened this morning was I saw myself. I looked into the mirror and I was dressed in a gown. And I was like, okay, uh, no, this got to be of the devil. I, I tried, started to try to rebuke it. I was like, well, the, this vision I'm having in the, seeing this in this mirror. Uh, and God says, no, I, I want to show you something. He says, you need to live married to me. Uh-huh. You need to live married to me. Yes. For in that, I will impregnate you with my purpose. 
I will impregnate you with my joy, with my peace, with my presence. And I was like, okay, now that that makes a lot more sense. I was like, but it was was crazy because he said, you know, Paul was talking about going bound in the spirit to Rome. Sometimes we're not bound in covenant with God. We use him as we we have him as a, a, a girlfriend boyfriend thing. Yeah, contract. Yeah, it's not a, a little, yeah, not in covenant. And so we need to come into that covenant with him to where now, yeah, okay, I'm gonna. It may not make sense sometimes. The light shines in ways to lead us into freedom that we don't understand, and it doesn't feel right, and it don't. Definitely doesn't feel pleasant at the time, but at the same time, he wants to take us in those avenues. And that's why he was talking about, you know, letting it shine before other people is because sometimes in that uncomfortable uncomfortability, then that's where we're showing the love that we have for God and Christ being his bride. And so Whenever we come to that piece of stuff that we do, we come back, like you said, well, tell the truth, shame the devil. Okay, so there's times whenever my wife and I, we may have spat. And (laughs) most of the time it's because of me. It's just one of those things where uh, I may want my way. And so I have to go back to her and I have to tell her I'm sorry. And in doing so, I'm renewing that love relationship. Mm -hmm. We need to renew that love relationship. Jesus talked about it to the churches in Revelation. Hey, you need to return to your first love. Stir it back up so that the light can become bigger and brighter in us so that it radiates into our desires. And (laughs) it's amazing that inside of the soul, our emotions are actually tied to our fruits. And for men, especially, you know, we don't display a lot of those emotions, you know, the crying and all the different things like our our women do, but it seems like a lot of times we have them, but it's amazing how the enemy pushes them to one primary area of anger, and those are the explosive outlets. And so it gives us the fruit of the spirit, so we got to harness that. And the first one, we call them bookends, right? So you have the bookend of love and you have the bookend of self-control. If love is getting weak and it's tottering, then it's not going to be gentle and it's not going to be forbearing. It's going to want its own way. And then on the other end of it, if we let self-control totter, then next thing we know, all of them are falling with it and we're like a a city without walls. We're overtaken. And so it's coming back to the place where we find that Jesus literally tells us if we follow the light, if we follow the light, we will not walk in darkness. So it's coming to the place that we can readily agree. Yeah. We walk in the light as he is in the light. We're going to be in the light. I mean, if, 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 you're, if, if you're in proximity, you know, to the light, well, then you're going to, things are going to be revealed. Yeah. It's not like, you know, I, I, mm. I, mm. I don't know. I mean, you know, I got, well, when you lift up a little cardboard something and all the cockroaches you know, <laughs> take off, yeah. they're, still, they're not looking for light. No, know? they're running from <laughs> they're it. They're trying to hide somewhere, you know. And so that, that's kind of the way we need to see it. We need to understand that we're creatures of light. We thrive in the light. We've been born again. We've been given a new nature. Mm. We had. That's not what we are now. That's yeah. not who we used to be. Yeah. Was a cockroach. We like the Come darkness. <laughs> okay. With that old nature. Yeah. You you thrive in the darkness. We're children of no. darkness. Yeah. Children of of you know uh, 
sin, sinfulness. Yeah. We don't, and, and we're going to always try to hide that sin and always, we know it's not right, but we love it. And, that, and so that's why we operate and run to it and hide in it. But whereas if you, if you're born again and you have this new heart, God giving you, God took that old man out. And he put a new man in. Yeah. And now yeah. that that Thank man you, is of the light. Yeah. We're children of the light. Yes. And you you capped on a, a word to kind of bring us to that place. But uh so again, people like to hide in darkness. The enemy literally instills fear that we gravitate to hiding in the darkness because we're afraid that we're going to be revealed. The enemy doesn't want us to be revealed because if we come to the light, he knows we're going to get free. Yeah. And that's the big thing is, is that God wants us to become free and whole and prosper in this new nature that he has given us in Christ Jesus. And I don't always like whenever conviction hits, it seems like, well, that goes against the grain of my self-desire. And true, it does, my fallen source of universal living. But if I run to the light, get comfortable running to the light. If we get comfortable running to the light, approaching it, then when we begin to understand that there's freedom in the light. Yes. It chases the darkness away. The enemy can't hold us any longer because of the simple fact the light has come. Life springs forth. It's transforming our mind, but it's also reforming our emotions, our will, and our mind. It works in our body in operation as we cooperate with our freedom in Christ. So I think the one thing that I could say in kind of a summary is this, is that if we won't fear God's love, see the holy awesome reverence of God is knowing, yes, that he judges sin, but he bring, here's the better side of it is he brings justice to those who approach him. As he, we come to him and approach him, he brings the justice of Christ's sacrifice to us. Yes. And he liberates us from that. And that's what he wants for us. He doesn't want us to live under the dominion of darkness the rulership of evil. He wants us to live in the freedom of Christ and his kingdom. That's why Christ came and he preached the kingdom of God is at hand. He wants us to experience it right in our present. And with that, I could say to all who hear and remind myself daily, Run to the light. Run to the light. Run to your freedom. God wants to overtake you and bring you new life. All right. Well, Dwayne, thank you again for joining us. Brad, it's been a pleasure, man. It's been so, fun. That's good. That's good. <laughs> Well, listen, everybody, I, we want to just encourage you. There's a prayer line right at the bottom of the screen here. We want anybody that uh, might need a little bit of uh, ministry along these lines, call that prayer line, uh, 806-340-0162. And uh, call that number, and, and somebody's there that can speak English or Spanish, and they'll minister to you, life to you. And uh, so every week we have, every Thursday at uh, 7 o'clock, we have this program, and we just want to invite you to uh, to come uh, to push that little like button and encourage PN, uh, maybe even uh, pin it on your um, social media so that other people, help, help us find other people that can watch and, uh, and be in, 
encouraged. And so that is our perfect plan is to encourage and inspire and lift up the body of Christ uh, so that we can be successful in these next these these dark days that are coming. We are known as the light. We are the light that is in the world. And Jesus, so far, Jesus has not chosen to take the light out of the world, so we need to be shining uh, in fullness because people definitely need us. Well, join us again next week at next Thursday, and we'll have uh, something new and exciting for you. We love you, and uh, God bless you very much. We'll say bye for now. Bye-bye. God bless. <laughs>